Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus was walking down a road, a man ran up to him, and he knelt down and asked him, Good teacher, what can I do to have eternal life? And Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? Only God is good. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not cheat. Respect your father and mother. And the man answered, Teacher, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was a young man. And Jesus looked closely at the man, and he liked him, and said, There is one thing you still need to do. Go sell everything you own. Give money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come with me. When the man heard Jesus say this, he went away gloomy and sad because he was very rich. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, It's hard for rich people to get into God's kingdom. And the disciples were shocked to hear this. So Jesus told them again, It's terribly hard to get into God's kingdom. In fact, it's easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into God's kingdom. Jesus' disciples were even more amazed. And they asked each other, how can anyone ever get saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, there are some things people cannot do. But God can do anything. And Peter replied, Remember, we left everything to be your followers. And Jesus said, You can be sure that who gives anyone who gives a home or brothers or sisters or mother or children or land for me and for the for the good news will be rewarded. In the world there will be given a hundred times as many houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and pieces of land though they will be mistreated. And in the world to come, they will have eternal life. But many who are now first will be last, and many who are now last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father in heaven and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When I, I read this gospel lesson, um, it reminded me of a story of St. Francis. St. Francis was born into a very rich family, and he had uh, heard the call from God at a chapel in San Damiano, which uh, Jesus spoke to him on the cross and said, come repair my church, and he took it literally. And so, being the rich uh, son that he was, he began to... Uh, uh, used some of his father's money to rebuild this church. And eventually he figured out that uh, when Christ said rebuild my church, he didn't actually mean rebuild it. He meant something far richer and wider than just the building. Anyways, St. Francis' father took him to court because he'd been using, St. Francis had been using all this wealth to do his own thing and so St. Francis went before the court, and at that time the bishop was also seen as a judge of some kind. And so St. Francis decided to, in the midst of the hearing, strip off all his clothes and get everything that was once given to him by his father and renounce it, saying, I will follow Jesus and God my father. And the bishop, being thinking this was a little bit scandalous, offered him something to wear. But the point of this story is that when Francis heard the call to give up everything and follow Jesus, he took it seriously. And he is one of the great examples of what it means to follow Christ. And so when we come to this story, that same call is for us. You know, in the United States, we are one of the richest nations in the world. 
that there are many people in India and Asia and Africa that live on less than a dollar a day. And so we are the rich. And so when we hear this young man say that he has done everything and followed the commandments, it's much like us. Because many of us come to church and we, we do our duty and we try to obey the commandments as best we can, and then Jesus tells us it's not enough. That's something that we have to think about and wrestle with. And then on top of that, Jesus says, a rich person will find it harder to get into the kingdom than a camel to the eye of a needle. I hope you're paying attention because that's scary to think about. There's no way a big old camel will fit through the eye of a needle. And so we are called as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, to give up our riches. And sometimes those riches can be material. I'm reminded of uh, um, my parents usually call every other weekend, and they're usually trying to pawn off something from, uh, from their house so I can take it home. You know, because I know many of you are retired and you're trying to get rid of your possessions because they have become a burden. It is the same with following Christ. But there are many things that become burdens and hindrances to our getting into the kingdom. And we can talk about physical uh, possessions and things, and we're all aware of those, but sometimes there are other things that we need to unload ourselves of. The treasure of the golden years. The church is changing, and many of us have fond memories of a church that no longer exists. And while they are very precious and good memories, sometimes they can be a burden for us to be a church for today and to follow Christ here and now. At a recent uh, clergy gathering, we, we always talk about the future of the church. We all have different hopes and dreams, and maybe sometimes we need to give up some of our hopes and dreams as well and focus on maybe what God is calling us to do. And some of those hopes and dreams might be restoring a wonderful stained glass clubhouse. Many small congregations have a wonderful little church in the country that their church, their church buildings themselves have become a burden for them to be able to share the gospel. And although wonderful and filled with memories, maybe God is calling them to let go of that treasure so that something more can grow out of it. When we talk about our treasures, we have many. But we also know that we can't take them with us. Jesus calls us to follow the cross. And right after this passage, Jesus, for the third time in Mark's Gospel, reminds them that he's going to the cross. And we are called to follow him there. To give up our lives. And to follow the cross, which is sometimes painful and hard, but a necessary step in our transformation and for following Jesus. But as we think about following the cross, and going to the grave, we are reminded that we serve and love a God who rose from the dead, the God of the resurrection. And so when we think about 
those things that we must give up, we also must think about those things in which Jesus Christ gives us. Life and hope here, now, and in the future. A life filled with grace and love and forgiveness that when we let go of our burdens, Christ will carry them. He will take them and transform them into something far more luxurious and far more valuable. You know, in the Amos passage today, it reminds me a lot of what is currently happening in our country. That there is a lot to lament and a lot of things to be wary of. But we have forgotten about the poor and the downtrodden and those without a voice. And that's where the kingdom of heaven is. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is with those who are poor. And so if we are to unburden ourselves of those things that hinder us from the kingdom of God. We are called to learn what the kingdom of God is from those that are the least of these. Because oftentimes they know more about the kingdom of God than we do. Though these are hard things to think about. And I hope when you, I hope as you go home that maybe you read this gospel lesson again. And think about those things in which you are needing to unburden yourself. <clears throat> but I also hope that you find something valuable in what Jesus offers us. That Jesus is alive. That death is not the end. That he offers us peace and hope and forgiveness. The kind that the world cannot give. And whether we're first or last, It won't matter, because we are with our Lord and Savior, and He loves us, each and every one of us, dearly. And that is more valuable than 